I find myself holding this graphics card again. This is my Radeon R9 290X. It has been an amazing graphics card for the last seven years. In fact, when it came out, this graphics card dominated the competition, being at a Titan level. But nearly three quarters of a decade later, it is getting kind of long in the tooth. It can roughly compete with a 1650, 1650 Super in that area. It has four gigabytes of VRAM, although you could get one of these with up to eight gigabytes of VRAM. And with AMD's latest patch to their Radeon drivers, they have officially killed off support for the 200 series. But with FSR, I feel like it breathes a little bit more life into this aging graphics card. So let's drop it in and see what kind of performance gains Fidelity FX Super Resolution can give this old girl. So here we have set up a 1050K with 16 gigabytes, some pretty quick RAM. Now this is very much overkill for this GPU. The most you would really want for this is like a 6th gen i7, you know, a 6700K would be a very good pairing for this GPU. Maybe even a first gen Ryzen 1700. Let's go ahead and fire up MSI Afterburner to get an idea of where we're sitting at. So this is one of those older GPUs that let you have a lot more tunability in the MSI Afterburner software. Now, I literally just made a video on this where I was talking about how it's very hard to do any damage to a GPU using MSI Afterburner, but this one has a very wide range of core voltage multiplication. So you can add say, 90 millivolts to it. Again, it's not gonna kill it, it's just, it has much more tunability than these newer GPUs do. Just gonna set the power limit at, you know, 50% and uh, leave it alone from there. I don't really wanna play too much leaving it out of stock, but it, it does it very little justice to run it at only 200 watts. Although it does get quite hot. So let's go ahead and fire up one of the, uh, the more basic Fidelity FX titles, Terminator Resistance. Now, the most I can squeeze out of this GPU through an Elgato is, is 3200 by 1800. So we're just gonna completely max out this game, just completely max it out. This is a very good GPU and a rather less demanding title. It came out two years ago in 2019. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it running poorly completely maxed out. It's not even actual 4K, although it is getting kind of close. So as you can see in the game, we are running at a 100% GPU utilization. Does an okay job of staying above 60 FPS, sometimes even getting up to 70 FPS. I mean, obviously if you're standing, staring at the skybox, you'll get a crazy 120 FPS, but just looking down to the ground, you know, we're seeing that 60-ish, 70. Then if we go ahead and turn on Fidelity FX Super Resolution, we get, I just, you know, turn on the ultra quality preset. The game still looks pretty much the same, but you know, we gain 10 FPS. Looking up at the skybox, you know, we're up in the 150, 160-ish, but again, skybox not realistic. And these god rays don't look too bad. Then say, if we drop it down to ultra quality, it hops another 10 FPS. Let's just switch it straight to performance. Again, I don't like how this makes the uh, the game look. Like it looks kind of blurry. It's not, it's not the best, but we're over 100 FPS. So if, if FPS was something that you were hugely worried about, here we are, it does run over 100 FPS at almost asterisk 4K. Although I feel like if this was running at 4K, we would be seeing over 100 FPS, which is kind of insane when you think about it, a seven year old graphics card running 4K. This game doesn't scale that much as far as resolution goes. So if I turn it down to 1440p, we don't see a massive increase in frame rates. Let's go ahead and uh, just put this back to ultra quality. Yeah, we're getting over 80 FPS. The game still looks very good. And if we turn it off, it still stays at around that 80-ish FPS, you know, drop down 70, but it doesn't scale that well. Like this game specifically doesn't feel like it scales that well as far as gaining FPS versus lowering the, F the, the resolution. So that's the first game done. It looks pretty promising. We're gonna go ahead and move along to the Rift Breaker demo. This game scales a little bit better with Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Let's go ahead and just set it to off. 
at 1080p. Everything set to high, just everything on high. So everything on high at 1080p, we're getting 80 FPS. Obviously, when you start clearing things on the screen, the, the FPS starts going up pretty dramatically. Let's go ahead and turn it on ultra quality. And we see a jump up to 100 and almost 20 FPS. I mean, you know, it's 110. Obviously, again, I don't want to clear too much off the screen because the, 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 the FPS really starts to go up. It's going to go straight to the performance preset and it's over 140 uh, up to 150 fps so pretty gnarly scaling there like that's a pretty good gain from like a 50 percent gain on a graphics card that isn't technically even supported in this title and then amd also just dropped the driver support for it too so very good scaling let's go ahead and turn it up to our fake 4k it's it's not actual 4k but and we're back down to 100 FPS. So not, not a bad deal. I'm just gonna go back to uh, 1440p because I don't like this weird resolution. Okay, so at 1440, we're getting natively 60 FPS. Game looks okay, it's not too bad. Again, 100% GPU utilization. This thing is working its ass off. And then if we go ahead and turn on the performance preset say we see a massive increase literally doubling the fps to 120 fps and then on the ultra quality preset we see a 20 fps increase so it's it's free performance like it really is just great and honestly it working on seven year old hardware is even like it's just a, a cherry on top I really thought that Cyberpunk was going to be like the last big title that this graphics card could realistically play and with Fidelity FX, there is so many doors opened up for this old hardware. And then last but not least, we'll just fire up some Dota. I like the slider in Dota because like while you're just moving it around, you can see the FPS go up and down. It's pretty hilarious. For Dota, there is a pretty cool little feature with it. So say you use advanced settings and then you set Fidelity FX to off. Just render it at 100%. Okay, so we're seeing 174 FPS. And then if you go ahead and open up the settings, the settings menu takes forever to load. Say you start moving that slider, but you turn it on, you can see the quality, or at least the FPS go down as you lower the render quality. <laughs> so say you just want to render it at 70%, have that on. I don't even know what our Resolution is that it looks like we're at 1080p completely maxed out And we see 180 FPS, so there's definitely FPS gains to be had in Dota Especially when you're maxing out the, the settings and this game does not look bad at all with at the 70% slider like it looks very good so this brings you more of a traditional like render quality slider so that you can kind of select how much performance you get I mean, all this probably is, is say on a different game like Rift Breaker, 40% is performance and then 50% is balanced and then 70% is quality and then 90% is ultra quality. That, that's pretty much all it is. It's just different ways of achieving the same goal. So that's Fidelity FX and Dota on the 290X. It looks like any title that has Fidelity FX is supported on the 290X. So if you have one of these cards and you're looking at any one of these titles and you're worried that say it won't play, it looks to me like any of these titles will play Fidelity FX turned on. So that's a huge selling point on a card that was already pretty good. Like the price gap right now, as far as uh, 1650s and 290Xs is actually pretty massive. Like you can get a 290x off of eBay for sub $200 where 1650s are going for well over $200 regardless and although it doesn't have some of the features like the 1650 does say the NVENC encoder which I mean why are you even streaming on a 1650 but another argument to be had <laughs> but if you're looking at a budget graphics card and you have say $200 to spend and you're still in the GPU crisis this GPU is very much 
still respectable, especially with Fidelity FX turned on. I could not find a game that would not play over 60 FPS at whatever resolution with FX turned on. And that is very compelling. Like to take old hardware like this, drop the driver support, but give you a single feature that brings it back from what seems like the dead is huge. I really feel like this GPU's true market value is around $80. I really think that it is hugely inflated right now, obviously because of the GPU crisis, but all of that seems to be calming down. So again, hats off to AMD for making Fidelity FX Super Resolution. I wanna thank Bernardo Dos Santos for leaving a comment on one of my other Fidelity FX videos asking me to try it out on some older AMD hardware. And so here we, we are. If you wanna see another video like this, say with a Radeon R9 380, again, a four gigabyte card, not quite as strong as the 290X, but I feel like it doesn't matter if it's that strong because Fidelity FX does such a good job of bringing older crappy hardware into the modern day. <laughs> and that's really gonna be good for, you know, people just trying to get into PC gaming and they just wanna play titles at over 60 FPS. They're tired of the console life. They wanna play games on real hardware. <laughs> no offense, console people, but totally offense. So do me a favor, get subscribed, hit the like button, and I'll see you tomorrow.